Hi, welcome to Fear No Evil. The evil that I'm speaking about today is child sexual abuse, mainly because it's in the mainstream media right now. There's a lot of misinformation that's being given by the news anchors. There's a lot of pressure that we are supposed to believe all the women, and we are supposed to believe all the women because the liberals tell us to believe all the women. I find that kind of ridiculous because child sexual abuse affects society as a whole, and nobody has a right out there to tell another sexual abuse survivor that you need to look at this situation from my perspective. Because what they don't understand is many children who are sexually abused as children don't report it because they have other people in their lives who they may have said something to who have silenced them, who have said to them and convinced them that what they're feeling and seeing is not happening. So at that point, the body kicks in It brings in the defense mechanisms so that that child can go on and live. Now, the child abuse statistics in general, according to the International Statistics on Child Abuse, reports that 40 million children are subjected to abuse each year. We also know that when it comes to the international, oh no, let's go back to the national and state child abuse and neglect studies. Child rape occurs every two minutes, and this is in the United States. One in three girls will be sexually molested before the age of 17. One in six boys will be sexually molested before the age of 17. A sexual offender molests an average of 120 victims, most of whom do not report it. 90% of molesters molest children they know. For every report that goes reported, two more go unreported. Of the 1.5 million runaways, 85% are fleeing some sort of abuse. Only 10% of molesters do not know their victim. And as far as abusive victims are concerned, 48% are male, 52% are female, and every race or religion sees sexual abuse. So there's no race or religion that has dominance on this. International statistics. There are five countries that have the most child sexual abuse allegations. Number one, South Africa. Number two, India. Number three, Zimbabwe. Number four, United Kingdom. Number five, the United States. Now, are there any studies out there that have looked at these statistics and done a study of these five countries to understand what is so common about them all, that they have the most child sexual abuse allegations? I think not. Don't you think we need more research on child sexual abuse? I think so. Now let's go to the statistics on those who identify as LGBTQ, because if you say there's a connection between the two, they say it's hate speech. However, my question to the LGBTQ community are is a twofold that they can never answer number one how's a hate speech if a child sexual abuse survivor is talking to another child sexual abuse survivor how is it hate speech where are you finding this foundation what is your premises on just to say that it's hate speech you can't tell another child sexual abuse survivor how to see another sexual abuse situation you don't have that right at all Now, there is a discrepancy on the number or or the percentage of how many homosexuals and lesbians are actually within our community. We don't know. Alfred Kinsey said about 10%. Other studies show between 1% and 3%. I'm not really going to go into why Alfred Kinsey's studies are not valid. He has been critiqued by his peers. There are many holes in his study that nobody wants to talk about. However, when they were asking the LGBT community if they were ever sexually abused or had a history of childhood sexual abuse, which is never included in the studies, 48% of respondents stated that as children, they had been sexually abused by an older or more powerful person. The statistics also show that most of the perpetrators of sexual abuse are male. However, we do have female sexual abusers. Usually it is a male, in those cases of child sexual abuse, who also identifies as LGBTQ, believe in 96% of the cases that their earlier trauma of being sexually abused by a male contributed to their own same-sex feelings. Again, childhood sexual abuse affects males and females, and is well attested to demonstrate a correlation to the incidence of homosexuality among those affected by it. A large national study of almost 35,000 Americans showed that more than three times as many men and women who had been sexually abused as children became homosexuals later in life versus that of heterosexuals. So America, so LGBTQ, how come we're not talking about that? How come we're not bringing these statistics out? 
How come we're not comparing these statistics to the biological studies that are out as well? This is not right to child sexual abuse survivors. This isn't okay for child sexual abuse survivors. If there are some people who believe that their earlier history of abuse contributed it to their homosexual feelings later in life, that needs to be talked about. That needs to be researched. Because there's not one study that says conclusively that homosexuality is genetic. And even if we want to go with the chromosomes and the hormones, there's study out there to explain some of this too. However, all of this gets silenced. It is called hate speech. And I find it very hateful on the other side. When you do not allow other sexual abuse survivors to speak and you silence them. That is the same silence that is experienced as a child and you have no right whatsoever to put that cloak of silence back on anybody else. So LGBTQ community, please explain. Why in your community is there a disproportionate amount of child sexual abuse survivors? And in those group of child sexual abuse survivors, not all of them remember that they are child sexual abuse survivors. <laughs>